This time of year, we are commanded to count the days of the Omer, the 49 days between Pesach, when we were freed from slavery in Egypt, and Shavuos, when we received the Torah. We're supposed to use each one of those days as a springboard for spiritual growth, as we prepare ourselves to re-receive the Torah. If you look back in Genesis, in Beratius, you'll see that at the end of Abraham, Abraham's life, we're told that he was old in days, not in years. And then if you look at the end of Jacob, Yaakov's life, we're told not that the day of his death drew near, but that the days of his death drew near. Why days in both instances? Because the patriarchs made the most of every single day. At the end of their lives, they could have given an accounting for each one of those days and showed how they used it rather than misused it, used it to bring themselves each day closer to God. And we're meant to do the same thing. But the rabbis later added an additional dimension to the count when they decreed that we should observe certain laws of mourning to remember the deaths of the 24,000 students of the great sage Rabbi Akiva, a tragedy that threatened the future transmission of Torah amongst the Jews. Because of those laws, we don't have weddings, we don't listen to music, we don't take haircuts, and we try not to shave if we can avoid it. Those laws add a certain weight, a certain gravity to the count. They help remind us that these are meant to be days of introspection, days of soul searching, days that we're supposed to make count, when we're supposed to make an accounting, when we're supposed to be accountable. But then suddenly, on the 33rd day of the counting of the Omer, on Lagba Omer, everything changes. We start celebrating. We celebrate and remember the day, that day, when Rabbi Akiva's students stopped dying. And we remember and we recall and we celebrate the life of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, one of the handful of sages whom Rabbi Akiva took on as students and whom through their scholarship ensured that the Torah would not be forgotten. On Lagba Omer, massive bonfires are lit in Israel and in Jewish communities across the world. They're singing and dancing. It's an incredible celebration on one of the happiest days of the year on the Jewish calendar. But that's strange because we would never go over to a mourner just getting up from Shiva, mourning the loss of a loved one, and hand him a beer and a burger and take him dancing. We would instead slowly ease him back into happy days. But Lagba Omer doesn't work that way. It's an instantaneous explosion of joy. Why? Perhaps because we're being reminded that no matter how bleak things look, consider today with rises in anti-Semitism and terrorism and assimilation and apathy. God, in an instant, in an eye blink, with a snapping of the divine fingers, can turn darkness into light, sadness into happiness. And so rest assured, no matter how bleak a time period you may be enduring, there is a light somewhere at the end of that proverbial tunnel, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and hopefully we'll get to both sooner than we think.